Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial lesson. In this one, we're going to be going over the new 3.5.0 alpha. We got a new blender. Basic splash screen, some of the same characters as before. Not that big of a deal. I'm a right click kind of guy and I like my space bar to be set to search. So we'll just jump right in. And in order to know what actually got changed besides the splash screen, you have to go over to the Blender's website. And 3.5 release notes, you can kind of click over and look and see. This is blank, there's nothing there. Um, a few of these didn't get any upgrades, right? Render cycles, the big stuff was in the last version. But they did improve the grease pencil. And what did they do? They took the sculpting auto mask and moved it to global settings and changed the hotkeys to shift alt a okay cool so i come on down to the python text and you can see some of the code if that means anything to you that is just about it there were no no excuse me no new nodes or physics currently uh, i do like to see this little virtuality tab right here because that's unfortunately empty but that is going to be full at some point soon and for the platform let's see what else do we have in here nope we already selected that and if we come to pipeline and assets we'll see that they worked on removing the incorrect edge recalculation which made the OBJ exports 1.6 times faster and there's some kind of like little kernel here you could click on if you want more data all right so in order to figure this out you have to come into blender and see what that grease pencil upgrade actually even means so what I'll do is I'll just delete the default cube that poor thing everyone always deletes it so what we'll do is it's just gonna add in a monkey and I don't have all my features set up so I gotta do some spacebar stuff here I'm gonna shade this smooth and I'll add this to quick favorites and I can kind of square up our Suzanne and it looks really bad so I'm gonna fix it up a little bit with a subsurf and I'll bring it up to I think one is good enough and then I will do a control a apply visual geometry to mesh that way we just don't have to worry about it now let's jump over to sculpting with our Suzanne and we'll do the same static setup as usual. You can bring this over one click if you will and then you can see all your brushes. And what we're going to need to do is grab the paint for this. And if by chance you want to see everything and what it says, you can just drag this over a little bit further. Generally that's not needed because you're only going to use two or three of these at any given time unless you're overly zealous with the blender sculpting. So before in my last tutorial I did on the auto masking, um, you could come over to the item tab, hit control tab in your pie menu and jump into vertex paint and then grab tool and pull this out and you could go under well, I don't even see it anymore. I don't see options now. But you can go under options and you could pull up your uh, your curvature, your inverted, your different masks and all that stuff. You could pull all that good stuff up. But I don't see it there now, right? So, all right, so if we were to just select a random color and just kind of paint this on, you'll see the standard blender result. However, what they actually did um, and I'm going to jump back over into sculpting mode. And you'll see I've already kind of got this mask on here. I didn't mean to do that so soon. Um, what you can do is you hit the hotkeys, Shift, Alt, A. And now it's going to pick up the different masks as you kind of float. And then you could kind of right click off. So let's just pick a color and go with this nice hot pink and i'll hit shift alt a and let me just square up our suzanne and you can hit shift a as well and this seems to kind of work as like a little bit of a gradient now let's go ahead 
and hit Alt A. And that is the original Pi menu that will get you into cavity, uh, topology, the area normals, the upgrades from the 3.4 alpha, and the view normals, which obviously just will, it'll kind of like just get the area you can see in the viewport, uh, the cavity inverted. So we could select light cavity inverted and go to like a light blue and you can remember what that actually does. And then if we hit Alt A again and go to cavity and select red, it obviously selects cavity. Now moving those settings globally kind of means something a little extra because what they were doing before with the brush stroke was when you went to select something, it was using or logic instead of and logic. So now the brush stroke is actually using and logic and it will isolate the brush strokes for you. So if I hit shift alt a and I can kind of like select my area, if you will, let's see if this matters. If I go and just select, let's go with cavity inverted and I'll just take the front view and I'll hit shift alt a and now I can kind of work with that mask right here and if I choose a different color I'm only coloring this which helps you isolate the brush strokes and I'm telling you that's genius because now I, I'm not hear my hear my clicks hear my clicks there's nothing else going on there so it's just isolating this area and I think we can fine tune all of this with radius and with strength and with fall off so you all know how to do that if you don't hit me up in the comments or just check out my other masking tutorial which i'm going to link uh, for this one as well so let me go ahead and just do cavity pick up this front view shift alt a and let's see if it actually will do it and I'll just pick this area up and go to light blue. <laughs> Pardon my evil laugh. That, that just relieves so much stress. I can't even tell you. That's so much better. This is so much better. The 3.5 is, is insane. Okay, so with what I did just there. And listen, I don't pretend to know absolutely everything about Blender for anything. But I've... I really like texturing. I'm, I'm good at texturing. Um, I like environments and things like that. And so to be able to manipulate the area uh, with the masking feature like that is global. That's so much better. That's like, that's a big, that's like Blender coming up and going on a Substance Painter and ZBrush's door. It's like, I'm here. And, you know, yeah, I may get some hate comments on that one, but I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's good stuff. So let's do this again. So Alt A and I will do view normals and I will take a side view. So obviously we're just going to be painting this area, right? But if I hit Shift Alt A, I could literally just kind of pick this up right here. Now let's just kind of hit the F and see what happens here. It almost looks like it's inverting it. Yeah, so F is actually inverting that selection. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to make the brush size a little smaller. Shift Alt A. And I could just say pick this little front area up right here and maybe I just want this area to be red because that's what I'm trying to do. And then control F can bring that strength up a little bit. All right, that wasn't too good of a selection, but you get the general idea of what this thing is capable of now. All right, and the other upgrade they did, which is super cool, is they made the masking, the auto masking brush with that nice global transformation. You can just do it all with hotkeys, but they also put it right up here under brush, just like a regular sculpting function. So it's right here. You've got all the topology, mesh boundaries, the cavity, cavity inverted, view normal and area normal so you won't find it in the options anymore my other tutorial is somewhat obsolete now because I'm sure they're gonna stick with this they meant to do that in the first place and so now they've actually got it where they want so if I wanted to select you know area normals I go ahead and select it right there and then shift alt a and kind of pick up maybe the whole thing right and make it a nice big brush 
go to baby blue, and I can start getting the area normals, which, you know, is a limited function set actually, but I mean, you can, uh, you can figure all this stuff out. If you know anything about it, you will figure it all out. And hopefully with some direction here, you will be able to do all that. And real quick, just remember when you check one of these on, you still got cavity selected and you've got view normal on. So if you turn off one or the other, and maybe it makes a little more sense, right? Just to have this up top. And yeah, this looks pretty good. So mesh boundaries, view normals, area normals. Yeah, so do it however you want to do it. You can create masks now on top of these as well. So you can use the exact same one and you can start drawing over the top of it as well. So that's another function. I want to make sure I cover everything. It's a lot of upgrades here. So this, this makes it, um, I think, comparable with any other software that's out there now. Argue the points in the chat if you want. But this is super cool. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. And if I can come up with anything else about this, I will. And I will share it and do a tutorial. And as always, hit that like if it was helpful. And smash that subscribe button. See you in the next tutorial.